Welcome to our webinar. My name is Tracy Cook with SOX Healthcare Communications. Firstly, on behalf of Dale Medical and SOX Communications, we want to thank all the frontline workers in our audience for your commitment and passion in helping us all through this very difficult time. We are truly indebted to you all. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And now I'd like to introduce our moderator, Lisa Gorski. Ms. Gorski has worked for over 35 years as a clinical nurse specialist, CNS for Ascension at Home, Wisconsin, formerly Wheaton Franciscan Home Health and Hospice, providing infusion-related education as well as direct patient care. She is the author of several books and over 70 journal articles, book chapters on infusion therapy and home-related topics. She is a past president of the Infusion Nursing Society, INS, and has chaired the 2011, 2016, and 2021 INS Standards of Practice Committee. In 2006, she was inducted as a fellow into the American Academy of Nursing. She speaks nationally and internationally on standards development, infusion, vascular access, and home health care. Lisa, welcome. Lisa, I think you're muted. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you, Tracy, for that kind introduction. Okay, before I introduce Nancy, our speaker and our program, I'd like to just take a minute um, and celebrate IV Nurses Day. We'd like to thank all of the special IV nurses for the contribution, and this activity in, is in support of those great nurses. So happy IV Nurse Day to everyone. Okay, um, the title of our webinar today is Keep Patients Secure, the new 2021 IV Securement Standards. Speaking on this very timely topic is a colleague and my good friend, Nancy Moreau. Nancy is an internationally recognized speaker and expert in the field of peripherally inserted central catheters and vascular access practice. As the owner and CEO of PIC Excellence, Nancy creates online educational programs and works with companies to provide education to clinicians. Nancy works in conjunction with Griffith University as an adjunct associate professor and a member of the Avatar Group. Alliance for Vascular Access Teaching and Research. Nancy has worldwide involvement. Having received her PhD based on published research, Nancy shares her knowledge through speaking, publication, and development of educational programs. Um, Nancy's disclosures are listed here um, as a consultant speaking bureau and research for the following companies. In terms of continuing education for nurses and respiratory therapists, a link to obtain credit will be available at the end of the webinar. And this educational activity is approved for one contact hour for nurses and respiratory therapists. The accreditation st statements are listed for your reading and support for this educational activity is provided by Dale Medical Products Incorporated. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Moreau. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for that wonderful introduction and for being such an excellent moderator for this presentation, Keeping Patients Secure, the new 2021 INS Securement Standards. Next slide. As you can see here, the objectives that we'll be covering today with this presentation um, will involve the 2021 Infusion Therapy Standards of Practice. These standards of practice provide us with detailed descriptions of types of securement and combinations for vascular access devices in terms of risk reduction methods, evaluation and guidance for assessment of, and documentation practices. We're gonna discuss the purpose and function of catheter stabilization, negative outcomes and failure as it applies to the use of securement, and then evaluate the common types of catheter stabilization, including engineered securement and securement integrated dressings. 
So when we think about vascular access devices and insertion success versus securement, which do you think is more important? I mean, of course, gaining successful insertion is a requirement to establish intravenous access for any treatment. But what happens if the catheter is not secured well? How does it affect the catheter longevity? Of course, catheter securement requires a successful placement in order for it to be used at all. But for catheters to remain in place without complications more than a few hours, they need good securement. So why does securement deserve our attention? Because without solid stabilization of a catheter, dislodgement can occur, and then we start over with insertion. So what is adequate or best securement? Lack of securement or inadequate securement shortens the life of every catheter. What good is successful insertion if we fail to adequately secure. So these are some of the issues that we will explore within these 2021 Infusion Nurses Society Infusion Therapy Standards of Practice. Keeping patients secure, purpose and function. When we think about securement overall, let's talk about the purpose. So, According to the 2021 Infusion Therapy Standards of Practice that were released this month, vascular access devices are secured to prevent complications associated with the motion at the insertion site and unintentional loss of access. So the purpose of securement is to act as a form of stabilization of the catheter within the vessel. It provides protection, and it guards against danger, risk, or loss. And when we apply that specifically to vascular access, limiting catheter movement and maintaining the dwell time allows the catheter to reach the end of treatment. It prevents accidental dislodgement, and it helps us to establish a firm platform of hold and protection for the catheter. When, when we look at securement, Effectiveness of securement in all these areas for vascular access is more likely to help the catheter reach the end of treatment. The Infusion Nurses Society Standards of Practice 2021, Standard 38, addresses the issues associated with securement. As you can see here, 38.1, 38.2, cover the issues associated with vascular access devices. Catheter securement has been as much of a challenge as catheter placement since venous and arterial access began. We clinicians tend to focus on the success of insertion and often shortchange the securement or apply it as an afterthought instead of giving securement the attention it's needed. Differing securement methods and practices with no consistency or standardization results in variable outcomes. So when we look at the INS standard 38, vascular access devices are secured to prevent complications associated with vascular access motion at the insertion site in order to prevent unintentional loss of access. Methods used to secure the vascular access device should not interfere with the ability to routinely assess and monitor the access device or impede the vascular circulation or delivery of the prescribed therapy. In other words, you certainly don't want to put something over the catheter that interferes with your ability to observe and assess the insertion site. And of course, we need to choose the most appropriate vascular access device and securement for that device based on factors that include the type, the patient's age, the skin turgor of the patient and the integrity, the anticipated duration of their therapy, and any previous adhesive skin injury that we'll talk more about later. Any drainage from the insertion site also requires you to consider different types of securement and dressings. We must be aware 
that there are high dislodgement rates with intravenous catheters, especially with our peripheral catheters. They can be reported as high as 1.8 to 24%, and then failed access can even reach 69%. We know that interrupted treatment creates problems for our patients with delays in delivery of infusions and delays in healing. We also recognize that each time a catheter fails, there's greater resource consumption with catheter replacement, increasing the cost. So when we think about catheter securement, does one size fit all? According to Broadhurst and Associates, one size fits all approach to central venous access device securement is inappropriate and likely to be ineffective. So let's think about a common myth. Securement is basically the same for all vascular access devices. We just put a dressing on and it works. It doesn't matter how or if the intravenous device is stabilized, the transparent dressing will hold it. So do we think this is true? And as we get more into the INS standards, I think that you'll be able to answer the question. Why do we need securement? Well, as we've already talked about, securement prevents catheter movement, it limits bacterial entry, it minimizes irritation, prevents accidental dislodgement, reduces catheter failure, and allows us to customize the securement to the patient and the catheter for the best outcomes. The purpose of vascular access securement is based on the patient's need for treatment. We know that establishing the best type of securement for the catheter takes into account the type of catheter, the location of insertion, and all the other factors that we've already identified that help us to individualize and customize it for the patient. If securement is effective, the catheter is much less likely to fail. So why do we need it? Well, at all of these points listed here help us to understand that we need securement for better outcomes. Standards for catheter securement. Um, in the INS 2021 standards are also included in standard 38. According to the INS standards of practice, the method of securing the peripheral catheter at the time of insertion is critical in order to visualize the insertion site and surrounding skin, as well as to stabilize and avoid premature removal. It also helps us to visualize and assess the insertion site. Using a securement method to stabilize and secure vascular access devices helps us in a variety of ways but we also need to choose the one that is most appropriate, one that allows for assessment and visualization. INS standards also states to avoid sutures as they create other problems that we'll talk to in more depth. We do need to maintain asepsis around the catheter and prevent contamination, which is done as we apply securement and the dressing to help to protect the entire area. And then we evaluate securement options in terms of clinical application and also cost and fiscal efficacy. We want to evaluate all these types of securement devices to see which one works best for your patients and which one is most cost effective. INS designated securement types this year in the INS standards, and I have to commend them on their excellent definitions. The key definitions that are included for the INS standards um, involve adhesive securement devices, or ASDs, integrated securement devices, or ISDs, subcutaneous anchor securement systems, or SASS, SAS, and then tissue adhesive, TA, as in a new area for securement. These different 
categories allow us to choose and even cross over using multiple different types of securement depending upon the patient and their needs. As you can see here, securement type details for vascular access devices are many. When we think about securement devices, we realize that they come in many different forms. We have simple forms of securement that are tape, adhesive strips, or flat transparent dressings. We also have suture and staples that INS tells us to avoid. Adhesive platforms provide securement with their attached anchors, clamps, and other types of gripping straps. And then securement dressings provide another form of securement with integrated stabilization or bordered cloth in the transparent dressing or the extra fixation that's attached to the dressing. The embedded subcutaneous anchor securement systems use metal fixation devices that are inserted through the catheter access at the skin level and they adhere to the dermal layer of the skin. And then we have tissue adhesive as a form of chemical fixation, glue, where drops are placed on the catheter at the insertion site in order to hold the catheter in place. Each of these types of securement can even be used together. Specific to peripheral catheters, integrated securement dressings are common and quite effective in reducing motion when applied correctly to stabilize both the catheter and the hub or tubing junction. We have the integrated securement dressings, the adhesive securement dressings that integrate Velcro overlapping securement, extension adhesive securement, or custom securement for winged IV catheter stability. The adhesive catheter securement can be used together with the integrated dressings securing either the catheter or the extension tubing. More and more we see tissue adhesive being used with all types of vascular access devices and especially those peripheral catheters that are inserted on difficult IV access patients to seal the insertion site and hold the catheter firmly in place, prolonging the peripheral catheter dwell time especially when a transparent dressing is used in addition to the tissue adhesive. We do see inappropriate types of securement or even complete lack of securement. There are many examples of pure, poor securement that you can see every day. Here are just a few with overtaping and inadequate stabilization. In the research by Steer and Associates in 2019, good securement was seen where the, the research compared to poor securement in the study that demonstrated specifically better outcomes with attention to bundled practices that included securement. This PIV5 rights bundle helped to promote better securement, as you can see, from those practices on the left side of your screen in comparison with those on the right. In the INS standards number 26, key definitions are given that identify the range of peripheral catheter types with short, long, and midline catheters, each of these requiring some modification to ensure good stability. The bottom line is that additional securement may be needed as an add-on to the primary dressing, as noted in the INS standard 38. By reducing the motion, there are less interruptions in therapy. Patients feel less fear and anxiety not having to experience replacement of their IVs, and we're able to control healthcare costs and minimize them. When we think about central venous catheters, Securement failures with central venous access devices impact treatment delivery and can result in additional morbidity, mortality, and procedural consequences. There's a lot at stake with central venous catheters, and complications with central catheters can be much more serious and require us to pay special attention to securement practices. 
On a regular basis, current status of central line securement includes dressing or tape alone. Sutures are still used on many central catheters. There may be inadequate or poor monitoring or assessment of the area to make sure that the securement is still adherent. We also see a lack of evidence and guideline applications from facility to facility, you know, hoping that we all apply best practices, but we know that there's a lot of inconsistency and variability in practices, not only from facility to facility, but also department to department. We see lack of securement with tubing and know that that can cause dislodgement. And of course, we just have to admit that one size doesn't fit all because we have many types and sizes of patients, many different types of co comorbidities that affect the type of securement that we need to use. In the INS 2021 Standard 38, they specifically state to avoid the use of sutures as they're not effective alternatives to a securement method. Sutures are associated with needle stick injuries and they do support the growth of biofilm around the skin puncture site of the suture and they increase the risk of catheter associated bloodstream infections. Specific to our, our SAS, ISD, tissue adhesive, or our adhesive securement devices for peripherally inserted central catheters, these all can be used as alternatives to suture, and they are considered to be safer than suture and reduce the risk of complications, including infection and dislodgement. Thankfully, we have much research that has been published recently on securement devices, that of Dr. Allman, and associates examine the role of securement and dressing products to prevent access failure with the narrative re review. This publication outlined some of the consequences um, with patient and securement failure and provided us with more information on types of securement and the successes. We see with our COVID patients that we have many more challenges that are associated both with establishing access and with maintaining securement. The most important aspect of access with the COVID-19 patient is to establish the appropriate access with a device that can last for the duration of the hospitalization. If the catheter lasts longer, then we actually decrease exposure of the staff, avoiding repeated insertion attempts. So once the appropriate access is established, it must be secured in order to protect the patient from loss. We've seen many difficulties in observing COVID patients, which places them at greater risk of central line associated injury of, of tubing disconnection, of infection, of disconnection of tubing, which puts them at risk for air emboli, and even simple delays in treatment. Having to maintain uh, pumps outside of the room and tubing and a variety of other methods that help to allow ease of access and delivery of treatment, and while also limiting contact with the patient, has put a variety of additional problems in place that also underscore the need for really good securement. Subcutaneous anchored securement systems are recommended for our COVID patients um, by multiple organizations. The one that you see here under Gavicelt and the World Congress of Vascular Access, Wilkova. When we have a need for suturing, it can be utilized with these patients, but education should be applied and we should give intentional consideration for the best type of securement for these patients and their central lines. Utilizing multiple methods such as tissue adhesive or other combinations of suturing with tissue adhesive application in order to control colonization 
education should be provided to the staff in regards to proning these patients and making sure that the catheters are secured prior to and during these maneuvers. Our adhesive securement devices are another key category within the INS standards. These are adhesive back securement devices engineered to attach to the catheter or extension tubing and adhere to the skin. We know that adhesive securement devices can reduce mechanical phlebitis, dislodgement, and infiltration, and that they should be positioned under the dressing and changed with each dressing changes, each dressing change. Additional securement can be used as an adjunct to the primary dressing to reduce the motion at the insertion site. Subsequent complications can also be reduced that interrupt necessary infusion therapy. And we've talked about how this can affect the patient in reducing anxiety so that they don't have to get restarted or worry about their catheter failing. So do dressings alone provide adequate securement? We know from the INS standards that additional securement used as an adjunct to the primary dressing can reduce motion, and we have evidence to support that. While some dressings include integrated securement, flat dressings have been shown to be inadequate and ineffective in stabilizing catheters. When flat transparent dressings are used, additional securement is needed under the dressing to reduce that motion and prevent dislodgement. We know from this study by Gunther that complications are associated with dressings alone and that we can have improvement by having adjunct types of securement. The integrated dressing systems, the ISD category, is a multiple part system. The integrated securement is a device that combines a dressing with securement functions. This transparent semi-permeable dressing and window has a bordered fabric collar that includes a built-in securement technology. This securement section is positioned under the catheter and a primary dressing over the insertion site. So first the primary dressing is applied over the catheter and insertion site, and then the additional dressing piece is collared under the tubing and around the exit site where the catheter tubing comes out, providing additional securement for that extension and over part of the primary dressing. This enhanced securement helps to um, provide greater um, reduction in motion and seals the bottom of the dressing, aiding in securement, sometimes referred to as a shirt and pants approach. The integrated dressing system provide enhanced securement more effective than a single piece dressing. Integrated securement devices, transparent membrane dressing securement, and sutureless securement have all been established to eliminate risk associated with sutures and avoid needle stick injury and bacterial colonization. We have research by Fang Ping and Associates that studied 13 different antimicrobial dressings and securement devices and showed that antimicrobial uh, dressings and different securement devices in their 8,400 patients um, resulted in the lower risk of catheter-related bloodstream infection and the lowest incidence of catheter failure. Using testing methods to quantify performance and provide evidence not readily obtained in the clinical setting are important to understand fundamental mechanical properties of these securement devices. When changing the type of securement that you're using in your facility, it should be preceded by an evaluation period always to test and trial performance so that you know that the outcomes are as expected. With integrated securement, it includes that combination of securement and dressing. So far, we've discussed a variety of dressings and securement types, many of which can be used in combination. 
it's necessary to be vigilant in evaluating ways to improve securement within your facility. Shelley DeVries and others have published excellent reports on these types of performance improvement studies that can be replicated in your own care setting. Much of this is also included in the INS standards in the reference section, so I refer you to those publications. Improvement in securement equates to longer dwell time, fewer complications, less clinical management time, and more cost-effective practices. When we think about different types of antimicrobial catheters, we need to um, consider those that are integrated with the dressings or those that are the sponge type dressings. As dressings and devices continue to improve, INS standards state that we should consider use of a chlorhexidine dressing as a strategy for reducing the risk for infection. Chlorhexidine impregnated transparent dressings and sponges were created to release the chlorhexidine at the catheter insertion site. We also now have antimicrobial dressings where the chlorhexidine is integrated into the entire transparent dressing. Thankfully, we have moderate evidence of reduced catheter-associated bloodstream infections um, that are associated with these specialty type of dressings in comparison with the regular polyurethane dressings. We know that some chlorhexidine dressings have a sticky hydrogel layer that makes contact with the catheter site that also helps to secure the catheter while still releasing chlorhexidine. Some of these antimicrobial catheter antimicrobial dressings also have the integrated securement within the dressing. Now let's talk about subcutaneous anchor securement system. The engineered subcutaneous anchor securement systems are an anchoring device that attaches to the catheter. The two small nitinol wires that are inserted along the catheter insertion site into the skin go beneath the catheter and are then deployed in the subcutaneous tissue to secure the catheter and then wrap around the catheter to hold it in place. This device is intended to be left in place for the entire dwell time of the catheter. The SAS, or subcutaneous anchor securement system, may be the device of choice for patients that are at high risk of catheter dislodgement, such as our neonates, pediatric patients, and confused patients, as well as for patients who have an anticipated long catheter dwell time and those who can't tolerate traditional adhesive securement devices. We do see that training for the SAS insertion procedure is necessary for it to be most effective, both for insertion and for removal, as it may not be intuitive, so education does help in the deployment and removal. According to INS, we know that some studies have shown the SAS device to be more effective than traditional sutures and the adhesive securement devices in preventing catheter failure, especially dislodgement, with patients with altered skin integrity. But we still need more clinical trials. Thankfully, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence in the United Kingdom has done additional research and advocates for potential patient safety and the cost benefit that's associated with the SAS securement, particularly for patients that need use greater than 15 days. They also conclude that more robust trial design is necessary in order to confirm these outcomes overall. We need to continue to evaluate different types of securement devices, including our subcutaneous anchor securement, and confirm that the outcomes are as anticipated and identify those patients who can most benefit. There's also a YouTube link here on this slide that can show you a demonstration of the SAS deployment and removal. Subcutaneous anchored securement systems do have multiple studies that support the use of these devices. 
Studies comparing the use of adhesive securement devices and the subcutaneous anchored securement show that they are an acceptable securement for different types of catheters, including pick lines, tunneled, cuffed, and non-tunneled catheters. Um, there's only one pilot randomized controlled trial that has been included, but there also are several small descriptive studies and more that continue to be published on a regular basis. INS also states that single center observational studies have demonstrated the SAS to be more effective, as we've already mentioned, to the adhesive securement devices in preventing failure. As always, we need more clinical trials in order to confirm safety and efficacy. So what about our tunneled catheters that have been used um, more and more with our COVID patients, but also more and more with patients who um, have difficult access or um, are confused and have other challenges? When we think about exit site choices, Exit site often dictates risk. Patients with risk of dislodgement or infection should have special consideration about the choice of exit site. The rapid assessment protocols of Repiva, Receiva, and Refiva combine with the Dawson zone inser insertion method, and they help us as clinicians to have a map of the ideal exit sites for the catheters that we're using. When the ideal exit site does not match the ideal insertion site, we can use things like tunneling in order to help to move the catheter exit site to a more uh, ideal area. This way, things like the jugular vein can be punctured, but an exit site can still be provided to the chest or to the arm or to the femoral vein or to the abdomen or even to the back for patients that are confused. We have multiple different types of research by Gotham, by Ostroff, and others who have shown us different methods that we can use with tunneling techniques that can be applied to pick lines, to axillary catheters, to jugular catheters, and various types of femoral catheters with mid-thigh femoral placements. So each of these types of research have provided us with options to use for repositioning exit site to a more optional, to a more optimal area that helps us to reduce risk for these patients. Now on to tissue adhesive. One of the newest forms of securement is our tissue adhesive, and it's a type of cyanoacrylate that's used on the skin as glue. Um, we used to joke about superglue being used in various medical applications, and in fact, tissue adhesive in the cyanoacrylate form is very similar. The cyanoacrylate formulation is a 2-oxyenbutyl blend that's available as a product that's labeled for use on vascular access device sites. Tissue adhesive helps us to secure the catheter in place and really seal the insertion site. This formulation is helpful in controlling and even eliminating gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial growth, as well as yeast and fungi. After the tissue adhesive is dry, it functions as a barrier to pathogens at the insertion site. When tissue adhesive is applied, it can then be placed, um, the dressing can then be placed over the tissue adhesive while the glue is still wet. This can increase dressing adherence and help to prevent catheter dislodgement. The tissue adhesive or glue does gradually slough off over about four to seven days. One drop can be reapplied with each dressing change in order to secure the catheter. If there's residual tissue adhesive at the time of the catheter removal, you can use adhesive removers in order to take off this extra glue. If a catheter is secured or if subcutaneous sutureless device is used such as SAS, the tissue adhesive can also be applied at each of the points of the suture entry or the subcutaneous device entry into the skin to help to prevent pistoning and also the ingress of pathogens. 
we know that stabilization is critical and tissue adhesive can be used um, to help to prevent the micro motion at the insertion site and under the hub, not just at the catheter insertion site, but also help to stabilize the hub. According to INS 2021 Standards 38, tissue adhesive should be reapplied at each dressing change and that we should assess the benefits of tissue adhesive as an adjunct to the primary method of dressing and securement as it can provide immediate hemostasis at the insertion site and prolong the interval between vascular access insertion and the first dressing change. You can see here multiple different publications that have studied tissue adhesive. So we have a, a, a fair amount of evidence that helps to support this type of application. We know that tissue adhesive helps to reduce dislodgement and catheter failure. We know that tissue adhesive has been tested for the long-term effects on catheter materials and has been shown to be safe even on our polyurethane dressing, or polyurethane catheters. Tissue ad adhesive was all, is also effective with our peripheral and central catheters in randomized controlled pilot studies and in emergency department studies that you can see pictured here and are also included within the references. The evidence supporting tissue adhesive continues to mount and tissue adhesive is being used more and more. In brief, the table here identifies each type of securement with benefits and use in combination with other securement. Cuff tunnel catheters are also included in this list since the Velcro cuff acts to allow tissue to grow into the Velcro loops and permanently stabilize the catheter, eliminating the need for dressing changes within six to eight weeks. We do need to have more randomized controlled trials to confirm the different types of bundled approaches of combination securement measures as stated in the INS 2021 standards. So what about other types of protective covers and circumferential wraps? Often covers and wraps are used to protect vascular access devices. We see them a lot with pediatric patients and neonates. But the INS standards tell us to not use rolled bandages, not to wrap all the way around. We shouldn't use them with or without elastic properties as a primary method of securement since they really don't provide adequate securement of the vascular access device. There are multiple types of manufactured devices that are intended to cover peripheral catheters, PICs, and other central catheters. Most of these are not specific for securement, but can be intended as site protection, commonly used under or over transparent dressings, and in addition to other forms of securement. These types of protection are most often used over a transparent dressing. They can help to reduce catheter dislodgement, but most of these devices don't prevent pistoning or secure the catheter in place. INS standards state that a singular tubular sleeve can be used and easily removed, allowing the inspection of the insertion site, and that this is preferred to the rolled bandages if additional security is needed. When we think about rolled bandages and elastic wraps, we have to see that they're not recommended and that they're considered inadequate securement that they can obscure the insertion site and not allow for good assessment. If wrapped all the way around an extremity, they can impair circulation and impede even the flow of an infusion. If patients are unable to tolerate any other form of securement because of friable skin or other types of comorbidities, we should consider tubular gauze mesh and potentially overroll using the gauze mesh over the rolled bandages or elastic wraps.
When we think about securement and dressings as a total, we do have to see that there are certain precautions that we need to understand specific to medical adhesive related skin injuries. Careful removal of all these devices, dressings, and securement is imperative to avoid skin injury. The INS standards define medical adhesive related skin injuries as redness, tears, or erosion of the skin, or development of vesicles or bulla in an area exposed to medical adhesives and that last for longer than 30 minutes or more following adhesive removal. There are certain types of applications that can help to reduce skin injuries and research that has been done, as you can see here, by George by Thayer and by Pavinka. These provide us with guidance on the use of skin barrier applications. We also have a central venous access device associated skin impairment algorithm that was created and published by Broadhurst and Associates. This is an open access document that you can find and utilize within your facility. It provides you with guidance on identifying the type of skin injury and then following the color coded areas in order to establish the appropriate uh, treatment and, and application of different types of solution that will help you to avoid added skin injury. The Infusion Nurses Society standards in standard 38 talk about securement devices that include adhesive and different types of, of adhesive applications that can cause skin injury. The standards recommend the application of skin barrier film at each dressing change, especially for those patients that are at high risk of adhesive-related skin injury. In addition, the 2021 standards have recommended that we limit the use of tachifiers or other liquid adhesives and instead use the skin barrier film to improve the adherence of our dressings and securement devices. As you can see here, application of barrier film skin protective layer beneath a transparent dressing is associated with less dressing disruptions and reduces uh, skin injury, promoting better skin integrity. The research by Fakina in 2018 shows that these outcomes can be achieved by using barrier films. So when we think about key skin securement tips, focus on assessing and preparing the skin for optimal skin health. Assess and protect the skin at the insertion site and use skin barrier film as we've already talked about. Think about the patient cognitive level and how they're going to react with the catheter and securement choices and apply the best type of securement. Focus on educating staff and patients on the vascular access device site care and help them to understand that prompt management of catheter associated skin injury can reduce this problem. Document the outcomes to evaluate for the most effective securement methods within your population as stated within the INS standards. When we're talking about securement care and management, the INS standards focus on the different types of application for um, the the different securement methods such as adhesive securement devices, tissue adhesive, and the other types of of SAS and securement dressings. The INS standards focus on maintaining asepsis during vascular access dwell time by using and managing sterile dressings and applying appropriate securement devices using the aseptic non-touch technique. Even good securement can fail and there are problems that can occur, as you can see from these three examples. We need to focus on using the most appropriate type of securement and certainly identifying problems quickly so that we can manage them. Assessment and education of the patient and staff are necessary in order to help to minimize these bad outcomes.
Negative outcomes with failed securement do occur. The INS standards say prevent catheter dislodgement through the appropriate use of catheter securement, as we've already said many times. We recognize that there are global inconsistencies with the use and application of catheter securement and dressings. And so we need to focus on helping to improve catheter um, securement and reducing failure that thus promotes patient safety. The INS recommendations on standard 38 state to allow visualization and not obstruct assessment. Some of our securement devices can be positioned in such a way that they allow for better visualization. We also need to carefully remove and even consider anchoring of tubing and devices to reduce dislodgement. We know that evidence supports the use of manufactured securement, which is preferred over tape and gauze as stated in the INS standards. So why use securement? Well, as we've already talked about, the purpose of insertion of an intravascular device, <laughs> sorry for the problems here. Yes, it's going to listen to me and go back to the right slide. <laughs> that we base all of this on the type of treatment that the patient is receiving. We have to customize it for the patient. Establishing steps to safeguard the intravenous device for the length of time needed to complete the treatment only makes good sense. If securement is effective, the catheter is much less likely to fail. Good securement will reduce skin irritation, will help to prevent infection, and will reduce overall catheter dislodgement and failure. In conclusion, with many differing types of securement, your knowledge of specific applications will guide your choice. Yes, this last slide will show up. <laughs> you need to have specific choices for your patients and with the treatment plan with their vascular access devices. Choose wisely, be intentional about securement, and for the life of the catheter. Thanks to considerable research within the last 10 years with the Avatar Group and others, and with the new INS standards, we do have some clear direction on the use of securement, as you can see with the many different types of securement pictured here. Thank you for your time and attention. So now I will um, pass back to Lisa before we get into your questions. Lisa will let everyone in the audience know how to receive your continuing education for attending this event. Lisa? Okay, thank you, Nancy, for a great informative session. And before we move on to the, the Q&A portion, I just need to inform all of you how to obtain your CEUs for this session move my slide here. Okay, so um, again, this educational activity is approved for one hour. To obtain your continuing education credits, you need to go to www.saxtesting.com slash p, and you will need to register at the site, complete the evaluation, and upon successful completion, you can go ahead and print your certificate. Um, support for this educational activity, again, is provided by Dale Medical Products in, Incorporated. Um, an archived version or on-demand version will be available as well on www.perspectivesinnursing.org and an email will be sent to all registrants when this is available. The on-demand version will be accredited for nurses as well as respiratory therapists. Now, Let's go ahead and begin our Q&A. We have quite a few questions, so we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so Nancy, is tissue adhesive safe for neonates, particularly premature neonates with compromised skin integrity? Good question. So I have not done a literature review on the use of tissue adhesive on neonates. I do believe that there is some there are some publications on that, but I can't really address that issue. And certainly we know that neonates that are in the, the 
low birth weight category and have very sensitive skin must be protected. And so it's possible that some of the formulation within tissue adhesive can be irritating to neonates. And so I would say that we need to use them with caution. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, when we take a look at the, the references within the INS standard, there certainly are a number of um, studies that involve pediatric patients, but not the neonatal population. So definitely, I think caution is advised with that. Okay, second question, again about tissue adhesives. Do they burn like liquid Band-Aid? Is this a patient dissatisfier? <laughs> So from what I've seen from the research and my observations in use with tissue adhesive, there's not much burning that's associated. Now, some patients are particularly sensitive to any type of chemical application, but the patient satisfaction scores and publications that report the outcomes with patients um, have not um, had a significant amount of dissatisfaction with burning. So I would say, overall no or if there is some burning it's minimal okay um the next question and i, I may take this and and have you mm -hmm. add on your comments nancy um i work at a county hospital for from houston um we use stat lock for in-house picks and then they go ahead and suture all picks that leave for the hospital or that leave for a for home or for a skilled nursing facility what should we do um, I, I did find that interesting as primarily a home infusion nurse, and I've done this obviously for many years. Um, it do, that does not make sense to me that you would change that. I think you really have to look at the education of the facilities that you're referring to. Um, all of our nurses are educated on the various methods for securement, um, and certainly we don't want to, to suture these picks. Um, one of the things that does happen, because we do have some hospitals within our state that do routinely suture, but they, they cause a lot of discomfort long-term and pulling, and we know they are associated with, with a risk for infection. So um, in my mind, whether you use an adhesive-based securement or another mesh the tissue adhesive, these mm -hmm. should be adequate for the home care patient. And of course, um, the, the nurses working for the facilities, whether it's um, a, a nursing home or home care, need to be well-versed in the methods for securement. I would say it's a rare event that we lose a line to inadequate securement. Well, I, I think um, to just add on to what you've already said, Lisa, which I fully agree with, um, we saw within the INS standards this time that that an, you were encouraged to consider subcutaneous anchor securement systems, mm -hmm. the SAS approach, especially if you're going to have a patient that will be um, discharged to another facility. I think that um, based on the evidence, you have much better outcomes with the SAS system than even with the securement and you're not placing the patient in as much risk of infection. We all know that, that sutures also come loose, have to be reapplied. Um, bacteria grows at the insertion sites if tissue adhesive is not used, and so there are a variety of problems that you wouldn't experience with the subcutaneous anchor securement systems. And so I would encourage you to pull the evidence on the SAS systems potentially reach out to the company that supports the SAS system and try and educate your physicians and other clinicians about this approach. Do an evaluation. Anytime you change securement, you should do a trial and evaluate to make sure that the outcomes are as you expected and, and then begin utilizing that system if appropriate. No, uh, no, I agree with you, Nancy. We have other options out there and need, need to employ them. Okay, um, one more quick question here. Um, we have quite a few, unfortunately, we cannot get to all of them. Um, here's a question that, that speaks to the, the lack of adequate securement. Um, you know, how quickly do you think clinicians will respond to this change in the standards and implement um, some type of improved securement device? So kind of an open-ended question there. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we all know that uh, at, at some level, administration is involved as well as materials management and making sure that we have the supplies and devices that we need. But 
you can be integral in doing the research and providing the evidence and showing them a method that you think would be more effective than what you're currently using. Um, don't be scared of research. Don't be scared to try and do a trial. There are multiple um, people within your organization as well as other people like me and other clinicians who are happy to help you, advise you, um, edit protocols or other things so that you can get started. But simple observational studies and, and product trials are, are easy to do. You can do them and show administration that you can be effective in improving your outcomes and also be cost effective. In many cases, you save money by not having to replace dressings, by not losing catheters. And so those are some of the things you need to study in advance to collect the data on what your dislodgement rate is, what your problems are, and then implement your solution and, and use the comparative data. Thanks, Nancy. We are at the top of the hour now, so um, we need to conclude this webinar. And thank you for attending this webinar. I am going to turn the presentation over to Tracy for some um, final concluding remarks. But again, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Lisa. We would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. And immediately upon the conclusion of this webinar, you will be presented with an online survey. Please keep your web browser open, and we appreciate your feedback, as well as a CE certificate of completion. To obtain your CE credits, credits please visit www.saxtesting.com backslash P and register at the site and complete the evaluation. And with that, this ends today's presentation. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.